Welcome back, team. I'm happy to be back. It was a long time out. It's been over a month since I've been on For the podcast. You. Yeah. yeah, it's been a month since we've podcasted. Wow. Even though a lot have hit, a lot has hit the fan, but it just felt like honestly, we're gonna talk about this. The boy who cried wolf. A oh, bit sure. hit the fan, but loosely hit the fan. <laughs> Yeah, well, it seems like it's been that way for some time now. That's you're right. That's yeah. that's all it's been, or little bits. Mm -hmm. Little bits. They're mounting up though, huh? But uh, news is blowing up right now. Sure. I think specifically this week. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of talk about James, but um, two things I want to bring up: President Biden at a business roundtable speaking cybersecurity. Like, why? Are, why is President Biden at a roundtable? Right. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. And then also, I'm seeing a lot about things falling into this category of acts of war right. that has me pretty concerned. I mean, I did just get married and yeah. my contract had the, the quotes acts of war in it. You don't get your money back. Sure. So the marriage contract, <laughs> right? Right. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> the venue contract. Oh, the venue contract. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That too though. Um, Where do you want to start? So let's, let's start with the first one. Why okay. is Biden at a round table? Is that common? Yeah, is he speaking you. on behalf of CISA and our federal agencies, or what's going on? Sure. Yeah. No. The, there's there's two components to that. One, the the, the business roundtable happens frequently. Presidents often meet with with the, the larger organizations' leadership. Uh, you, we always hear about this for in the tech industry for being like Mark Zuckerberg, Bezos, Elon Musk. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, recently, they've been uh, <laughs> grilled in front of Congress right. for different things they do within their uh, their, their algorithms, but this was more of a, uh, how does, how does, how is business operating? What's the economy doing? So I thought this was going to be a lot on inflation. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be a lot on, uh, taxes and even more on international trade. Mm -hmm. Instead, he spent a, a more time than I would have thought talking cybersecurity practices. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit different. Um, usually, uh, Biden wouldn't talk cybersecurity, at least as loosely as he did. Some of the things he said um, when he was in front of the group was that, a, 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 I guess, our intelligence programs have evolved um, and that we are getting more and more information that a mass scale cyber attack from Russia is imminent. Um, that was a, a bit drawn back later. Uh, I'll explain that later. But uh, he said that to the group. Then he said it's our patriotic duty that we invest all we can um, into. Uh, making sure that we're putting in preventative measures to protect ourselves. Because if, if you're not going to do it just because you're a good citizen, then you better tie some emotions to it and be a freaking good citizen. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I, when I first heard it, I was hearing the patriotic obligation comment, and I was thinking in uh, the stories that I learned in school about like World War One and World War Two, and how the men had to go fight in the wars and the women went into the steel mills. And uh, I mean, they went and played baseball, right? Wasn't there a big movie on that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this one is a little different. We can all sleep in our beds at night and stay home, but we need to invest all of our uh, discretionary funds, I guess, into preventative measures in cybersecurity. Uh, but like you said, CISA is the branch of Homeland Security that, that usually deals with these matters. Um, they, they usually speak on, the, on behalf of the White House for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sounds like they got their word in too. Because did, did I, mean, I think about, I think about like uh, President Biden, like he can't possibly know what's going I mean, we hardly know. We can hardly right. keep up with what's going on. Like, yeah, they really step in and speak. They're the ones that released a memo that we've done a podcast on before, yeah. right? So I, I know our audience has heard their language yeah. through our voice at least. Right, um, I know. And our CISO has been active on li at least funneling information through us. Right, on internally. What the, the White House memos yeah. and all of that. And, and so their, their voice is really trying to tell everybody it's not that we have uh, reason to believe that a cyber attack is happening tomorrow. Um, although I would argue there are some, some reasons on why you might think that. Um, they, they were really saying, here are the things you should do to help yourself. Um, they even future-proofed it and said, once this round kind of subsides, here are the things that we're going to be focusing on in the future. So should your investment strategy allow you to start putting towards some future items, you can future-proof yourself for what the CISA is mm -hmm. going to tell us is fundamental in the, I don't know, two years from now. Mm -hmm. So that's really what happened. Yeah. I'd like to go back to the, the cyber war, though. Like, that's, I mean, that's probably the biggest news story is when is it right. going to happen? Is it going to happen at this point? We've been warned six yeah. for six weeks now or whatever. Yeah. This and, one feels different, for sure. Yeah. Why? Yeah. So, well. <laughs> but I know the media, the, so the media is diluting it, right? Right. And I feel like, are we doing the same for our customers, too? Because sure. we're on the edge of our seats, like, waiting for this to happen. And 
When, when he does it, are we going to be surprised, or are we just going to be the boy who cried wolf? Well, we're going to pretend we're surprised. <laughs> no, uh, so the, the surrounding news stories with this are rather interesting. Um, there's there's some, some cool ideas for this. One thing that they released right before the roundtable was a list of 140 Russian-based IP addresses. And those IP addresses are, they've been captured or, or caught by our government on U.S. companies scanning those businesses. Um, that, and almost every one of those circumstances was found on a, a company that fits within critical industries uh, or critical infrastructure. Um, I'll talk more about those 140 in a minute. Uh, one of the reasons that this hasn't happened, according to Biden, uh, he, he mentioned that um, it's just not a, a tool in Putin's tool belt that he's yet to pull out and use. Uh, but it's waiting. It's ready. He's he thinks it's yeah. He thinks okay. it's coming any day. Yeah. Because he's just looking at uh, Putin's current physical strategy right. and seeing that it's not working. So we we put these sanctions in. We reduced the the value of the ruble. Uh, now Putin's starting to feel some some pain, both ego, where mm -hmm. he's getting slammed globally for his behavior, yeah. and now in the pocketbook. And so they, he believes that the weaponry is getting more and more aggressive that in turn so will the odds of a cyber attack. I have a, a personal theory that I think that Putin believes he has a physical advantage, but the moment he opens up the cyber attack world and the cyber war opens up, his physical muscle no longer matters, his intellect muscle matters most, and I don't know that he knows what the other team has. He knows he's physically superior though to Ukraine, he may not know what happens when he opens that up. Not to mention there's a NATO rule, attack one, you attack all. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard mixed stories, but there's there's a chance that cyber war uh, circumnavigates that clause. That doesn't necessarily directly impact that idea. So um, if we're coming to the realization that Putin could attack that way and not have it impact NATO, then I would imagine he's more likely to go that route and tell the U.S. quit sanctioning me so hard, quit doing these things. Yeah. But lastly, it, it may be happening. Um, I just mentioned the 140 IP addresses that were caught. Um, that's an interesting story in itself. We've also got recent news stories as, as recent in the last, say, five to seven days, um, close to home to us uh, in San Antonio, Bexar County. Uh, they, they were uh, hacked and, and they had a, a major breach. Um, HubSpot, the, the CRM tool, uh, they were breached. And then uh, maybe the biggest, Okta, uh, which is a, a multi-factor authentication program, um, major enterprise company. Uh, I'd say the global standard right now for that process. Um, they were hacked. It kind of made me laugh when they were hacked. It was a little sidebar, but a long time ago when, when COVID was kind of first coming into to effect and all these cyber attacks were going up, Verkata, the camera company, was hit. Do you remember that? Yeah. And we have Verkata cameras inside our office, so we were a bit nervous about what that meant. Turned out we weren't impacted. Um, but I remember when the Verkata attack happened, everyone said Octo was hacked. And it was like simultaneous. It turned out it was because they had Verkata cameras. They ended up not being breached. And their CISO had to release statements a year ago saying, like, here's what we saw, here's what happened, here's how we took action. They weren't actually breached, though. Now they are. It's sort of bad press, though. It's you know, terrible like press. Like someone, yeah. someone says that you're part of it, and it's part of backpedal. Turns out you're not. Yeah. So the, the story behind the IP addresses, though, scanning has a lot of people kind of shaking their heads. Initially, most I would hear from would say, that's crazy. The 140 IP addresses from Russia that are doing bad activities on your network, that's just geofencing and geofiltering, which is some part of our secure by default. That's some really fundamental foundational stuff. It's technical as all get out, but it's, it's fundamental. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a way to kind of stop that. But if you look at it from a different direction, why would someone be scanning someone's network? Well, that's that's a precursor to a breach. Right. So they're probably doing it for reconnaissance. Mm -hmm. So if they're if they're looking at our critical industries, specifically five energy companies, um, and then others within critical industries uh, for reconnaissance purposes, and then on top of that, we're seeing Octas and HubSpots and Baxter County. But the attack might be already occurring. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's good stuff. I, I just want to end on this on this topic, and we can dive in just a little bit. But this idea of cyber war and what happens yeah. when it breaks out, and our customers that, or whoever, if you're relying on cyber insurance yep. to cover you, you've reached a point of no return because we're going to go back to this topic of active war. 
that that's your yeah. cause. It's not gonna it's not gonna be your fail safe anymore. Yeah. So this this is a, that's a great point. The, the act of war clause is the most common exclusion in cyber insurance contracts. And so for our listeners that may not read the contracts that closely, um, there's the the most common outside of act of war are third party vendors which takes you back to those supply chain attacks, like that solar winds breach we, we really talked a lot about, um, lost portable devices, and then security maintenance failures. Security maintenance failures is an interesting one too. So essentially, if you don't do your job right in patching, you're, you're, you're kind of not gonna get your, and that's an exclusion in itself. Yeah. But then in turn, if you patch, and that patch is a supply chain attack, well, that's a third party vendor. Yeah. So you're you're finding more and more ways that insurance can get out of paying. The way they're wording active war these days is actually war invasion and terrorism. So a war invasion and terrorism clause is gonna keep you from potentially getting your payout should you be breached during a state of war with Russia. So if you're you're swimming now and something happens, there is literally no one to left to pull you out of the pool but yourself. You gotta pull yourself out. Yeah. And, and so essentially you're operating in a way where you paid your premiums, but you're gonna be self-insured because you're gonna cover that cost. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're paying both. At this point, and yeah. we're in war. <laughs> we're in a war, but yeah. that's that's a great point. Now, Putin's saying, the Kremlin in general is saying, no, they're denying it. Surprise, surprise. Right. But that's we're not gonna not stop. doing that. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> the, the, so think of an insurance business looking at that. They're not going to say, well, the Kremlin said it's not war, then we're going to pay it out. They're going to look at what Biden has said about it's imminent, it's coming, and that these are coming out of Russia, and they're going to find what reasons they can keep from paying. So it's, it's not the world's greatest scenario right now if you're in a position of not having preventative maintenance and preventative measures already in place. Yeah, yeah. Last punchline to business leaders. Got anything? Stop um, waiting. Do yeah, it now. I, I think it would be. I know everybody we talk to is looking for the wise way to spend money. But if you've got anywhere in your business where you might be spending wastefully, even if it's like at your coffee bar and break room, think about how you ought to be putting those uh, the extra money today in, in this preventative measure. And, and it's possibly a more than one fundamental measure you're missing. But you need to shore these areas up. Um, no one's no one's going to back you out of it once something happens. Guys, you keep following along as the bits at the fan. You can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn. We're talking all these stories, breaking them down. We're even taking a deep dive on our blog on a lot of these hot topics. So you can find more there. We'll definitely link those in the show notes. That's it for us today. We'll see you in your feed next time when bits at the fan. <laughs>